Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make soy milk with just soybeans and water. Sound familiar? Well, you may have seen my previous how to make soy milk tutorial, but in this updated version, inspired by your comments and the homemade vegan pantry cookbook by Miyoko Shinner, we make things even easier and quicker by skipping the overnight soaking step. The end result is a more neutral soy milk without any bitterness to cook off and less planty plant taste. It won't taste exactly like the store-bought brands that have lots of fillers and flavoring ingredients, but it's still great for drinking as is, making tofu and condiments like condensed milk or mayonnaise. Start with a cup of dried soybeans. I find them in the bulk food section of my local supermarket. You may also find them in the dried bean section of your grocery store or online. Cover them with plenty of water. Then turn up the heat and bring them to a rolling boil. This step kills off some of the bitter beany flavor. Let it boil for a couple of minutes, then remove them from the heat. Let the beans cool just enough for you to handle with your hands. Drain them and we'll blend them with fresh water. Add a total of five cups of water to the beans. My blender isn't big enough for everything, so I'm gonna do half the beans at a time. Blend until the beans are well pulverized but not liquefied. In my regular household blender on its highest speed setting, this took about one minute. You won't need that long if you're gonna use a high speed blender though. Blend too little and you'll get a thin milk. Blend too long and it will be really difficult to strain. Next, fit a pitcher or large jar with a nut milk bag or as I'm doing here, a jelly bag and pour in your blended soy milk. Make sure you twist the top before you squeeze the bag. Be gentle but firm. This is an exercise in patience. You don't want to squeeze too hard and break your nut milk bag or jelly bag. Squeeze in different areas of the soy milk pulp to get it all as dry as can be. When you're done squeezing out the pulp, it should look like this. The bits are quite fine and the texture will be kind of like Play-Doh but just not as smooth. This pulp is called okara and retains lots of fiber, some protein, calcium, and traces of other minerals, so save it to toss into bread recipes, seitan, or try my okara sea burgers. The resulting milk should be nice and creamy, but it's not done yet. Transfer the soy milk to a pot so we can cook it through and get rid of any raw taste. Just take it to a simmer over medium or medium high heat for 10 to 20 minutes. Keep an eye on it as soy milk has a tendency to go from peacefully simmering to bubbling all over your stove in a matter of minutes and it is a real pain to clean. You may notice a thin skin forming on the top of your soy milk. This is known as yuba or bean curd. You can mix it back into the milk and it will dissolve or you can remove it in sheets and use it to replace egg in egg drop soups or even use it as a meat alternative. Let me know if you want to see a tutorial on that. When you think it's ready, give it a little taste and see if you want to add any vanilla, sweetener, or salt, or other flavorings before transferring it to a clean glass jar or pitcher to cool. Or leave it plain and keep it on the stove if you're going to make tofu with it. I usually keep my soy milk plain so I can use it for different things. Now your fresh homemade soy milk will last 3-5 to five days in the fridge without any preservatives. Or you can freeze it and that will keep for about 2 months. Just don't freeze it in a glass jar, that would be asking for trouble. Thank you to everyone who requested this updated video and to everyone else for watching. I hope you liked this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for new easy vegan recipes every Friday. Bye for now.